Hello everyone, it's Yintan here, and welcome to the latest episode of Yin Talks. Now my last video, which was a bit of news content, was really really popular, and don't worry, I'm going to get back to a bit more of that on Friday. But for now I'm going to continue experimenting with different types of content by doing what I'd normally do in one of my articles and bringing it directly into video content, rather than doing a video adaption like I normally do. And today we're going to take a look at probably what's one of the most confusing parts of the game, and that's how turrets work. Most people can tell you the general rules of thumb of what makes them work and what makes them doesn't, but I'm fairly sure most people don't know some of the intricacies of how all the damage calculations work and what feedback you actually get. But if you do know them off by heart, then congratulations, because you're a bigger Eve nerd than I am. To start with, let's take a look at what you can find out about the guns in-game and explain how that's broken down. This tab is available for every weapon in the game, just hit show info in your right-click menu and go over to the Attributes tab. This gives you a big block of information about the weapon system, but it doesn't really go into explaining what all of these attributes mean, so let's group them together and reduce them down into what we really need to look at for now. The first section of attributes are something that we can't change, so we don't need to worry a huge amount about. But what this tells you is how many charges you can fit in each gun, and what charges you can actually put in them. The reason why all of this information is necessary is because the same charge use system is actually shared across all modules in the game. So for example, ancillary armor repairers or capacitor boosters also have these same attributes. Next, this is just a bunch of different static properties that you can't really do anything about and doesn't overly affect how you're going to use the weapon system. However, if you want to check what your reload times are going to be, or what exactly the bonuses you get from overheating a module are, you can see this in the attributes window in these same areas for other modules and not just guns. But for most ordinary use, you're not going to have to worry about things like this. Anyway, so with all the useless information taken out, you can see that we've isolated it down to five really core characteristics that only turret systems have. And this then feeds into how the turrets behave in the game. Accuracy falloff, turret tracking, and optimal range all feed into whether or not you're able to hit the target you're shooting at. The damage modifier determines how much damage your shots do, and the rate of fire determines how much damage you do per second, as if you take the overall damage dealt per shot and divide that by the rate of fire, you get the paper DPS dealt. In addition, if you check some of the other windows, you can find things that are also important, like the fitting attributes, which determine whether or not you're going to be able to fit a full rack of guns to the ship that you're trying to use, but that's something that we'll cover in another episode. For now, we're just going to focus purely on turret mechanics. So let's start with the immediate question. When you press F1, as directed to by your FC, what happens behind the scenes to determine whether or not the target goes boom or not? So the first thing that happens behind the scenes is that Eve assigns you a number between 0 and 1 that's several digits long. And it does this for every turret that you fire, so even if you have all your turrets ungrouped, you won't be able to get multiple rolls at getting better RNG. You're effectively rolling all of the turrets at the same time if you're grouping them, but they are still rolled separately behind the scenes. This number is super important then, however, as it goes into two separate calculations, both the damage calculation and the tracking calculation. We're going to break both of these formulas down separately, but for now let's start with a base RNG so you can get an idea of what they look like, and also so that we can see how it impacts the further calculations when we get through to them. In this case we have a roll that is slightly below average at 0.3869431. However, as we're going to see going forwards, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But let's move forwards and just show what this means in the simpler of the two calculations, which is the calculation to determine how much damage you actually deal if you are able to hit your target. The first thing that you have to do here is to figure out the base damage that each turret shot is going to deal unmodified. And to do that, you have to multiply the base damage of the ammunition with the damage modifier of the turret that you're firing it with. However, after that, you have to then multiply that by a base damage coefficient to get the actual damage that your shot will deal. And here is where the random number that we got earlier comes into play, as the base damage coefficient is 0.49 plus the RNG number that you get, which in this case means that our damage coefficient is 0.88. 
The damage coefficient that you end up getting is actually what determines the text that appears in your combat log. So you can determine actually whether you're rolling high or low, if you're ever curious. In this case, the end result is that we'll get a message in our combat log that says hits for 618 damage. The one exception to the base damage coefficient rule, however, are wrecking hits. And those happen if the RNG that you get is below 0.01. And if that happens, you'll actually deal 300% damage all of the time. And in faster fights, things like wrecking shots can really change the pace of a fight, as they can quite often go through an entire ship's buffer. Anyway, I have my crystal ball out, and I can predict already that one of the most common comments I'm going to get on this video is the question of how do I improve my damage output. So I've taken the liberties of listing out all of the methods that I can think of off the top of my head, and if you think of any more, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. The first and easiest way to improve your damage output is through skills, and these come in both the variety that's available to alphas in things like Surgical Strike, and things that are more available to Omegas, like the higher levels of Autocannon Specialization skills, which is a tree of skills that all T2 weapon systems have, and improve their damage by 2% per level. The second is by damage mods, and these are things that you should already be familiar with if you've fit up your own ships before. However, if you aren't, all different weapon systems have some form of low slot module which improves their damage output. And these come in different meta variants, which have differing levels of efficacy for differing levels of cost. The next thing I'm going to suggest doesn't actually improve your damage output technically, it just improves your DPS, and that's heating your weapons. As I showed right at the beginning, overheating your weapons gives them a rate of fire bonus of 15%, which does effectively mean a 15% increase in the DPS of your ship's turrets. Alongside this, you also have implants and drugs, both of which will impact the damage modifiers of your turrets and improve the overall damage that you deal per shot by modifying the damage calculation mentioned earlier. But the most often overlooked way to improve your overall damage dealt is to improve the base damage dealt by the ammunition you're using by improving its quality. As there are three effective meta levels of ammunition, with Tech 1, Faction, and Super Pirate in order of damage dealt. Alright, with that little detour out of the way, let's get back on track and get onto the turret hit chance calculations. Now, to determine whether you hit or not, the game checks whether the hit chance percentage, which is also preserved as a figure between 0 and 1, is greater than or less than the RNG given. If the RNG is greater than the hit chance percentage, the shot misses. If it's less than the RNG, however, the shot connects. This means that with the RNG that we got previously, we will be able to hit as long as our hit chance is above 38.69%. Now one interesting quirk that you should immediately note from this, however, is that your lower damage hits are more likely to actually connect with your target, and this has some implications that we're going to go into in the summary, but effectively it's one of the reasons why you do less damage to a target that's moving in a way that's difficult for you to track, as your higher damage shots won't connect with them, as you need a higher percentage hit chance to be able to have those land in the first place and deal that damage with the high base modifier. Unfortunately, your hit chance calculation is actually a very, very big formula, as you can see, but we can actually break this down into two separate components, the tracking component and the range component, and then bring them together at the end to make things a little more easy to understand. The range component is a little difficult to understand if you just lay it out mathematically, so I've decided to represent this in a visual format by presenting a graph which shows the percentage chances of you being able to hit at different ranges with a theoretical weapon system that has a 10 km optimal range and a 25 km falloff range. As you can see, by the time you reach the limit of falloff, you're only going to be able to hit 50% of the time, even if the target is stood completely still. And by the time you reach double your falloff range at 60 kilometers, you're down to a 6.25% chance to hit just from the range penalties alone, not including any tracking difficulties you might have. Also, for future reference, as this will come up later, the distances here are measured from the edge of each ship's sphere to the edge of the other ship's sphere. Alright, now let's take a look at the other side of the hit chance equation, which is the tracking component. 
Now, the first thing that you have to work out in order to understand the hit chance implications of the tracking component is your angular velocity. And now I'm sure you're asking me, what the hell is your angular velocity? Well, the answer to that is it's your transversal velocity divided by your distance. And now I'm sure you're asking me, what the hell is your transversal velocity? And let me explain. Transversal velocity is effectively all of the motion that an object has which is perpendicular to you from your point of view. So it's the motion across your field of view as far as you can see, excluding the component of moving towards or away from you. If you have an engineering background like myself, you might prefer to think of it as the horizontal part of a force vector. And that means that you can calculate it fairly easily by just multiplying the velocity of the ship by the sign of the degree at which they're approaching you from. As I mentioned before, you then divide that by the distance that you have, and that feeds back into the initial tracking component equation, which is 0.5 to the power of angular velocity multiplied by 40,000 divided by the tracking speed of the weapon system multiplied by the signature radius of the target that you're shooting at squared. One super interesting quirk of this calculation, however, is that the distance you divide transversal velocity by is not the edge-to-edge -edge distance that we saw previously with the range calculation. Instead, it uses center-to-center -center calculation. And what this means is that for ships with a larger hitbox, such as Titans, they effectively add an extra 18 or 20 kilometers to the range when working out their angular velocity, making it much easier for Titans to actually hit things as it's effectively impossible to be at zero on them if for the terms of the tracking equation. Which is why you see long-range weapon systems sometimes being effective with them against subcaps. Just to give a brief demonstration of how this calculation ends up playing out for terms of things like angle of approach and speed, here's a variety of different angles and speeds with a static value of signature radius and tracking speed being used against it, and then the hit chances that come out of that equation. So you can get a quick guideline of how all these things end up playing out. Although for things like this, if you're actually intending to do them seriously, I would suggest using Pyfer and letting it calculate the hit chances for you, as doing all this maths properly is not worth your time, in all likelihood. So let's just summarise in order to explain the basic rules of thumb that come out of the hit chance equation. The first big one is that smaller, faster, or further away targets will be harder to hit. The second is that tracking is not always the reason you miss a target. Sometimes you might be simply in your fall-off range, which is within your advertised range according to the weapon system, but doesn't give you 100% accuracy at hitting the target. And finally, slowing down a target, increasing its signature, or increasing your own tracking all has the same effect. So making sure that you have a combination of them in a fleet is very important if you want to augment your fleet's tracking and be able to hit smaller targets on a large scale. The final thing I want to highlight is the impact that having a lowered hit chance actually has on your damage output. As you can see, having a 100% As you can see, doing the advertised 100% of your base DPS is reliant on having a 100% hit chance and falling below it skews the normal distribution of how the RNG impacts your damage distribution, lowering it further than just the actual amount of missed shots would imply. Alright, well, with that we've actually covered everything as far as I'm aware. We've gone through how you determine what your hit chance is going to be, how you determine what damage your shot is going to deal, and how your RNG interacts with both of those things. I hope this is something that you found useful or at the very least interesting. And until next time, Fly smart.